Do you know what is the most important verb in English? To be or not to be? That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune or to take arms against the sea of trouble and by opposing end them. Do you remember this monologue from Shakespeare's Hamlet? In the very first sentence, this verb is used three times. To be or not to be. That is the question. Do you really know this special verb? If you want to learn five roles and eight forms of the verb to be, keep watching. Hey, it's me, Chuchilka. Welcome back to the channel. And if it's your first time, Welcome, it's great to have you. You might think you know the verb to be, but sometimes you forget the correct form or you are not sure where to use it because the verb to be likes to be different. It changes a lot. Wow! In different tenses, for instance, it looks completely different. But when you learn this verb, the English grammar would be much more easier for you. I promise. The verb to be has more roles than most verbs. Let's count. A main verb, an auxiliary verb, a linking verb, a phrasal verb, a verb in the construction there is, there are. Let's now talk about each role. As a main verb, the verb to be means to take place, to be located, exist. Let me give you some examples. Max has been to London several times. Has been. They were at the conference last week. They were. The meeting was at six yesterday. Was. Number two. It can be used as an auxiliary verb. It helps to form the continuous and perfect continuous tenses in the active voice and all of the tenses in the passive voice. Sounds complicated? Don't worry, we'll discuss it. Active voice, continuous and perfect continuous tenses. For example, she was working at 2 o'clock yesterday. Was working. It's past continuous. He will be studying at 4 tomorrow. Will be studying. Future continuous. She has been exercising for 3 hours. Has been exercising. Present perfect continuous. Easy, right? <laughs> Passive voice. It can be used in passive voice as an auxiliary verb, as we said earlier. It's the verb to be and the past participle of the main verb. Where can you find it? It's a third column in the verb form table usually given at the end of every textbook. Examples would be This video will be shared by all my followers. This work is done by my assistant is done. The meeting has been cancelled. Has been cancelled. Number three, the verb be can be used as a linking verb, which connects the subject with the predicative complement which describes the subject. Wow, that's, that's complicated. It's a word that describes the subject, what the subject is or what qualities it has. The linking verb to be may be followed by a noun, an adjective, a numeral, a pronoun, an infinitive, a gerund. Whew! A lot! For example, with a noun. My neighbor is an accountant. Okay? With an adjective. Business has been hectic recently. Hectic is an adjective here. Okay? 
where it can be used with a prepositional phrase. For instance, me and my colleague are from Seattle. Are from Seattle. A prepositional phrase, okay? And of course, number four, a phrasal verb. Verb to be can be used as a phrasal verb. It's probably the most popular phrasal verb in English. There are about uh, 40 combinations and definitions can change even with the same preposition. For example, to be with someone can mean to be involved romantically. To be away means to be somewhere else, on holiday, etc. For example, the Johnsons were away all last week to Mexico. To be down can mean to be depressed or a reduced price. For example, after their team loss, many of the players were really down. My wife got these because they were down 50%. Perhaps she bought some shoes or whatever. To be off means leaving. For example, you don't like the party and you're saying, I'm off. Verb to be is the only verb that has several forms for showing person and number. In the present tense, it's I am, he, she, it, is, we, you, they, are. Number five, the, the construction there is, there are. There was, there were, there will be, etc. A special type of predicate that is placed at the beginning of the sentence. Usually, predicate is at the end, and here it's at the beginning. It is used when you want to say what is in some place. For example, we use it to introduce new information or to say that something exists or happens. We use it to describe a character or a place or to set the scene when we are writing something. Okay? For example, the dog is under the chair. The sentence tells you where the dog is. There is a dog under the chair. This sentence tells you what is under the chair. Are there any letters for me? Yes, there are. So there is, there are is always at the beginning of the sentence. Okay? Now, what are the eight forms of the verb to be? Do you know them? Write them below. Number one, be. In the present tense, it would be am, is, or are. I am, he, she, it, is, we, you, they, are. Past tense, was, or were. Okay? Past participle, would be been. And the last one, present participle, is being. Okay? I'm sure you know all these forms and you use them. You just don't know that it's the form of the verb to be. Remember, you can watch this video again to review the topic if you want to. Please download my free ebook about the verb to be and see you in the next video. Bye!